everyone and welcome to our Get to Know Satellite webinar. Uh, we'll just wait a couple more minutes for a few more people to, to join and then we will get started. There are lots of ways to talk about mental health, in the news, in the community, and with the people we love. Sometimes we use words that represent a diagnosis, words like anxiety, schizophrenia, depression, eating disorder, or addiction. Sometimes a mental health challenge is talked about without a name. We might describe challenges through the ways they make us feel or the effects they're having on our day-to-day -day life. Everyone's experience with mental health is unique, and it's usually a mixture of tough stuff and good stuff, a bit like life. Each year, at least one in five people in Australia experience significant challenges to their mental health and well-being. And young people can take on caring roles and responsibilities within their families, just because it's needed. When someone we love is struggling, it can be worrying and confusing. It can also be hard to talk about, even with our closest friends and in our families. Satellite Foundation exists to connect young people and their families with others who might have a similar experience. We provide a positive space where you can be creative, have fun, and make important new friendships with people who get it. There are lots of different satellite programs. Some are online, others are in person, or a combination of the two. I think the old saying is that, you know, if you have a problem and you share it, 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 it halves it. I think as human beings, it's core to our emotional development and our well-being is, is, is sharing those things in, in positive ways. Hello everyone, thank you all so much for attending. All the folks that you see on your screen now and I are super excited for you to be here and learn a little bit more about Satellite Foundation. Today with us we have Rose, our CEO, um, Mel, our family liaison, and Kim, our marketing and communications manager. We also have some incredible um, Satellite staff being a bit more behind the scenes um, and you'll get to know and hear from them a little bit more in this shortly. But for now, I'll introduce myself. So I'm Ren, I'll, I use she, they pronouns and I am a part of the Satellite's Youth Advisory Council, um, which you'll hear a bit more about later. I was given the opportunity to be the youth representative here today to talk to you all about satellite from the perspective of a young person who has done the programs and been a part of the satellite space for a while now. So basically, I get to just rant about how much I love satellite and how it's helped me, which is so fun. Um, today, we are going to be covering quite a few different things to help you all get to know what satellite is and what we do a little bit more. We want to share the work that satellite does, our values, why we do what we do. We want to highlight what being a young carer means and why it's so important to have this space for young people with those caring responsibilities. We're going to introduce y'all to some of the programs, workshops and activities that we run and how they work. Also highlighting some upcoming events that you may want to get involved with. And finally, we want to share how to refer young people to these programs and workshops. At the very end, we'll also have some time for a Q&A. Um, so there's a section in the toolbar that has a small circle with a speech bubble and a question mark. If you click on that, a Q&A space will pop up and you can type questions anonymously. Please feel free to ask questions throughout the webinar um, and we'll look at them at the end. We don't want you to forget any questions that may come up before the end of the session. 
Um, this session is also being recorded, so the recording and a transcript of the webinar will be sent to everyone following this session. I have been chatting now for a while, so I am going to pass it over to our incredible CEO, Rose. Thank you, Ren. Um, it's wonderful to be here. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands that we live, work and create on, and pay our respects to elders past and present. I would also like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm on today, the lands of the Wurundjeri Warburang people of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. We acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded and that we are all on unceded lands. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. We recognise people who have lived a living experience of mental health challenges through experiencing it themselves or in their support for a loved one. We recognise the intersectional experiences of our community and welcome the unique perspectives that members of First Nations, culturally and linguistically diverse, LGBTQI+, neurodiverse, D-deaf and or disabled communities bring to our spaces. We thank them all for their willingness and generosity in sharing their stories. Thank you. So it gives me great joy and hand on heart to be here today to talk a bit more about Satellite and the wonderful, I think, organisation that we um, are growing. Satellite was um, started in 2009 uh, which is a long time ago now, from a really small but passionate group of individuals, including service providers and families and people with a lived experience, who were beginning to understand that this group of children and young people and families were really largely invisible, that their experiences of living with family mental health challenges was really hard and were living with a huge amount of shame and stigma and discrimination. and. Satellite was really co-founded in the spirit of giving voice to those people that were, were invisible and were being um, held back from finding their true potential. So in 2009, a few of us got together and looked at what we'd done so far and were worried that the programs part of that, the direct services that brought people together, so that sense of peer connection and not feeling isolated, like I was hearing from so many children that they were the only ones, for example, in their school that would have this experience. And for me, still um, seeing um, children, uh, young people and parents get together and see they're not alone is, is just profound. So we were a very grassroots organization for many, many years with no um, staff. Um, we got funding in 2020 from the Commonwealth government for one year to really look at providing some programs as a response to COVID and some of those programs online are still going and you'll hear about those. And we were funded in 2021, subsequent to being named in the Royal Commission, Mental Health Royal Commission uh, in recommendation 32 for four years. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. You could peel me off from the ceiling. It was wonderful news. Satellite is a not-for-profit that connects and empowers children and young people aged 8 to 25 approximately, who have a family member living with mental health challenges. We are now growing and growing and growing, which is very exciting. And we have a um, beautiful team of 28 people, casual facilitators, um, 25, and they are made up of people who've come through our programs that are facilitators and also make up our Youth Advisory Council, which is truly wonderful and very, yeah, we're very humbled that we we have a space where young people can come and work with us. The vision, purpose and values of Satellite really speak to how we started and the core, the core vision. The core vision is that every young person who has family mental health challenges has access to safe, creative and inclusive spaces. And that those conversations that we used to hear we still hear are hard to have within community, within families, and in with universal spaces are, are hard to have, and we want to facilitate that. Our purpose is that we put children and young people at the heart of everything we do, and 
we support their ongoing growth and transformation so that they can realize their full potential. And very importantly, we want to be here for the long term, supporting these young people into early adulthood and beyond. And these, this work, these core principles are enshrined in our values of collaboration, compassion, creativity, inclusivity, and community. This um, slide speaks to the three, what I would call the core pillars that um, sit ar around and within all of what we do. The facilitation roles in our satellite spaces include these three lenses of creativity, mental health and well-being, and lived and living experiences. And we always have facilitators, three facilitators um, that represent or can uh, speak to those lenses, but they overlap. So many people in our team have uh, can speak to two or more of those as we particularly as we increase the number of young people with a lived and living experience on our team. But those three pillars are critical and core to what we do. A bit about how people experience us, which is again um, speaks to the heart of what we do. We have had uh, we, we're growing. We've now had 500 people take part in some kind of um, offering in satellite, a program or activity in the last 12 months. And it's wonderful to know that we're hearing from our surveys that people generally almost always feel, for example, safe um, and also that they their whole self and values were respected. And that's very important to us that people feel heard and held and that they are getting to meet people who are a bit like them, that they are meeting people like us at the beginning and they see each other and they get it. And that's extraordinarily, it's, it's magical when that happens, really. So I think that's all I want to say. I'm going to pass back now to Ren, I think. Yes, thank you so much, Rose, and thank you for everything you were saying. You always put it so eloquently um, of how important these things are for satellite. Um, and I always re resonate with everything that you say of be satellite being such a warm place, and I feel so connected with everyone here. Um, but for now, I'm going to be talking about young carers. So you may have been talk, you may have heard us talk about young carers or young people with caring responsibilities when talking about satellite. But what does that actually mean? It's difficult to say a definition for a young carer as it is a pretty loaded term and everyone has different relationships with it and what it means to them and everyone is also on their own personal journey with the term as the assumed idea of a, what a young carer is can be pretty narrow which can lead to confusion and doubts around identifying with the term. I myself am still working through these personal doubts, but being with Satellite has helped me realise that I do relate to many aspects of being a young carer and also has helped me open my perspective on what it really means. So for me personally, being a young carer means caring and supporting my loved ones a little more than someone my age typically would. And that's not just physical caring, though it definitely can include that, but it can also be mentally caring. So being concerned, trying your best to help in any way you can, being overly aware of the emotions of those around you, anything like that. Um, again, I can't make a blanket statement for the, what the term means. Every young carer you ask will likely have a different perspective or definition um, and some might not even identify with the term, which is totally fine and is also why here at Satellite you'll often see us talking about our young people, not as young carers, but as young people who have loved ones or family members with mental health challenges. It is very likely that if you do have a loved one with a mental health challenges, with a mental health challenge, you are a carer in one way or another. But Satellite is aware of that stigma around the term young carer. And we want every young person with those experiences to feel welcome here. Everyone with caring responsibilities faces challenges. Young carers or young people with loved ones who have mental health challenges face a lot of challenges because in the core of everything and all our responsibilities, we are young people. We still are figuring out who we are. We're still trying to make a pathway through for ourselves through work, school, TAFE or uni. Um, we want to go out and be silly with our friends. We want to do all the important things and all the things that we love and are passionate about and experience all those important life experiences for people our age. But sometimes that can be difficult. And not just because of the fact that you have, if you have caring responsibilities, a lot of your time is taken and energy is take is spent caring, 
but also because of the lack of understanding around young carers and mental health in general, which can also be internalised. Again, I can't personally list every challenge that a young care, young people in our satellite space face. Um, everyone experiences things differently and may come up, up against different things, but something quite common within the space that I see and something that I personally have struggled to come overcome is that stigma. There is a lot of stigma in the mental health space and Satellite recognises that. Sometimes this stigma can create barriers for young people accessing services like Satellite, preventing them from finding these communities of people who understand what it's like to have loved ones with mental health challenges. Even I wouldn't have joined Satellite Foundation because of this battle of stigma if it weren't for a direct referral. Stigma is something that happens everywhere and for almost everything, but Satellite tries to, as we often say, break down the wall of stigma and allow for more open conversations. A perfect example of this is our Stigma Beat project, which was a co-designed project with 18 young people from Gippsland, with the result being three short films addressing the impacts of stigma and aiming to combat it. Satellite often does co-design and co-creation projects with young people, as well as just involving them in everything that we do. For example, I'm here right now with you all. Um, we believe that lived experience should be genuinely valued as expertise, and young people are paid for their time when working on these projects. There will be a link for you to check out the Stigma Beat project in an email following this webinar. Satellite overall helps young carers by providing a community of people who understand, limiting the stigma in our spaces. Young people also have the chance to just be young people in our spaces, connect with others like them and have the time to express themselves creatively, all while being surrounded by people, both participants and staff, with lived experiences. It's truly such a warm space and I love every satellite event I get to be a part of because sometimes, and I know for me, young carers don't know something is missing until it's there and that something is satellite. I don't feel so alone now in my experiences and I could never think of how I felt um, before joining Satellite. And Satellite also isn't just an incredible space for young people either, but it also offers so many pathways for the young people who come into our orbit, all of which focus on guiding young people and supporting them and amplifying their voices. I personally have been with Satellite for two years now. I did a free program called Satellite Connect and then was offered ongoing support by being in Satellite's orbit. I also joined the Youth Advisory Council, or as we sometimes call it, the YAC, which is a group of 18 to 25 year olds who are consulted on all aspects of satellite, any changes, any upcoming events or promotions, we're involved in it all. And being a part of Satellite's Orbit and the YAC, I get so, so many further opportunities as well, such as being here today with you all. Earlier this year, I also did a free mental health first aid course and facilitation 101 training. I am also now a casual facilitator, helping to co-facilitate some of our incredible programs for all ages, which I will pass over to our amazing family liaison, Mel, to talk a little bit more about. My apologies, uh, technical issue with my uh, microphone. Um, I just wanted to say, hi, my name's Mel. I'm the family and youth lia uh, family liaison officer here at Satellite. And I have the privilege of being able to sit within our engagement team uh, within Satellite. I also just want to thank Ren um, for their love and energy in what they've already shared with you about Satellite. They obviously really love and are connected to satellite and that's a really empowering fuel for us in the engagement team to continue to advocate so strongly for young people and for families and to continue to fight for opportunities for our people, uh, young people to participate in. So I have the privilege of being able to speak to you about our key programs and workshops, our engagement um, tools that we use, so how you can refer young people and families um, and some of our upcoming programs that we have. So our key programs that we have, are, there's three of them. So we have our online programs, which came about due to uh, COVID and the isolation that families and young people were feeling uh, because of COVID. 
It's a great introductory program into satellite uh, where young people get to join our programs, hear the language that we use, share um, our creativity and, and our flair for learning about mental well-being strategies to support themselves, but in the safety of their own home. We have face-to-face -face programs, which we call our Create and Connects, which are kind of like a roadshow program where we deliver all throughout Victoria. So not only in metropolitan Melbourne, but also in regional Victoria. Uh, we also um, offer camp programs, which are a huge highlight uh, for all our staff members, where we get to take young people uh, away for three days, two nights um, in beautiful camp locations all across Victoria. Um, and for our older young people, we have Satellite Connect programs, which is either a four to six week program um, that's delivered both um, in person, but then also online to reach our regional um, young people where they get to um, meet other young people around the same age as themselves. Um, who experience life with a family member with mental health challenges. Um, which may, which also helps them to talk about their caring roles. So the workshops are offered in person or online, as I said, and are facilitated by staff, satellite staff and peer leaders. So anyone um, that has lived experience and is, and is able to safely share that with others. Satellite connects pr and provides a safe space for participants to share their experiences and just have start to have those brave conversations. Um, and it ends with an amazing opportunity for young people to participate in a weekend retreat. So not a camp, um, our young adults now get to, to sit back and reflect and rest and connect uh, with others that they've um, started to build relationships with. So these are just a few of our images uh, that we've taken along our many programs that we've provided here at Satellite. Uh, the one in the top left hand corner and the one on your right um, really resonate with me as part of um, a program that we get to, to also sometimes offer is our family retreats, uh, which we will be able to be able partnering with um, organisations um, in this coming year. Um, they're an opportunity for us to celebrate families, opportunity for us to be able to bring families from all walks of life that all have similar values and morals when it comes to that they have um, someone in their, their hemisphere with, with mental health challenges. So we, we focus lots on creativity, as Rose and Ren said, but giving them activities where they get to celebrate the expertise that they bring. So we get to really um, harness and, and identify for them um, their strengths that the families all, all possess, that they bring with them. Um, it's hard for families, uh, you know, that are struggling with mental health challenges to be able to be, to feel as if they're being their all, to, to be able to be a parent, to be a carer, but to be a partner, to, to be a worker. Um, and our retreats really offer the opportunity for families and for parents to, to learn that, or to for them to acknowledge the fact that others see value in them and see that they do really hold the strategies and that they are the they are um they do have the strategies um, that they need to, to, to do and to be all that they want to be. Next slide, please. Some of the other activities that we do, um, as you can see, we don't mind getting our hands messy or hands dirty. Um, and so talking about um, get, getting to, to play with utensils, paint, um, and, and making lots of friendships. Some of the other activities um, that we do while on camps and, and um, on family retreats are talking about feelings boxes. So it's an opportunity for young people and for families to um, talk about feelings that they
Amazing. I'm so sorry that we're having technical issues. I'm presenting on Jar Jar Long Country and sometimes my internet is a little bit fuzzy. So um, I do apologize. Um, once again, some more pictures of some um, programs that we have done uh, at our program. So the main one is this camp banner in the top right hand corner. Uh, it's an opportunity where uh, the groups get to have an individual part um, of a larger scale. So they get to put their handprint, make a, a, a bit of a, a creativity outlet that is representative of them. They get to bring a little bit of culture, their likes and dislikes, um, and it all gets piece, uh, put together to make one huge camp banner that we all use for uh, fo a photo opportunity, but we also use it um, as an opportunity for engagement at other activities, just so um, community can see what we what we what we do. Um, and then there's always our fun little down the bottom, our right hand corner is one of our fun at home programs. So it's an opportunity for kids to really get creative, get down to basics, because we at Satellite really believe that busy hands means freer mind. So to be able to offer opportunities for young people to get as creative as they can, that helps then for them to feel a little bit lighter so that they're able or stronger, um, to, so that they're able to start having those brave conversations. So eligibility. As Rose and Red spoke uh, before, our programs start from eight to 25 years of approximate, but anyone that's been with satellite for a while knows that 25 is definitely not the end age group for us. Uh, as you saw earlier in the starting video, we have lots of young people that started off in programs that are now team members. So our casual facilitators, um, our lead program facilitators, um, and uh, even uh, now youth liaison officers themselves. So that age really is approximately. Um, the only other eligibility is that there needs to be someone in the family, um, both birth and chosen, that has a mental health challenge. So it doesn't need to be a diagnosed ailment. It can include things um, such as our diagnosed elements, depression and anxiety, but it can include things, you know, with complexity of addic addiction. So um, drug and other alcohol, um, it can include gambling challenges. Um, it's really just about life's challenges and the ups and downs that that brings. Um, and we also, you know, the hope is that you're looking for social connection or you're looking um, for education around um, mental health. Next slide, please. So how do you make a referral? They're quite easy. Uh, as you saw before, or as you will see, our engagement team is quite a large team. So um, we're always up for a good chat. I know uh, I definitely am. Um, so first and foremost, consent um, at everything that we do uh, for organisations, gaining consent from your families or from your young people that um, you're able to speak on their behalf or you're able to put in an expression of interest, uh, signing into the QR code or going into our website and filling in an expression of interest with just some basic information about yourself and your organisation um, and then the young people that you're wishing to, in, to um, engage with satellite. And then a, a satellite staff member will then contact you. Um, we like to do warm handovers here at Satellite and learning as much from you, the, the, the people that are really supporting our families and our young people, to learn from you about how your organisation is supporting them, about the protective factors that you have noticed within the family and within the young person. And then learning about some of the challenges that they're facing. Are there any legal or safety concerns? Um, what areas do you think that this family is needing or these young people are needing support of? And so after that, then um, I will be making an attempt, um, if it's for a family, um, I will be sending out a warm text message just to introduce myself um, and then letting them choose a time that is right for them we don't want any nasty surprises of 
cold calling and them not knowing a mobile number that you're calling from. Um, we want their um, experience to be warm and, and welcoming and we don't want it to be an opportunity where families have to feel as if they have to share their story again um, or retell it. Um, and so getting as much information from you as we can helps make our handover to the family just a little bit more warmth um, and we then get to share with them all the amazing programs that we have to offer for their young people. So the amazing engagement team, look how big we are. Um, so if you think that there's only 28 staff members within satellite that are um, on a part-time, full-time basis, engagement team is quite a large one. Um, and we have amazing representation. Uh, so we have schools liaison, a community engagement officer, two youth liaison officers, um, and a wonderful peer worker who gets to work really closely with our YAC. Um, and gets to, to fiercely advocate um, for young people. And we're all led by our amazing cheerleader, Kathy, who um, really helps to um, for us to be able to share our ideas about things moving forward um, and, and to help advocate for our families and young people. So what is a saddle? Like, how are we different and what makes us <laughs> amazing? So. Uh, we're non-clinical. We have a light touch approach to offering to offering programs um, that lead to having brave conversations about people's lived and living experience. Um, we are not a short-term service. So unlike some, um, we get to hold people until they feel as if they're empowered enough to, to leave us. So we know that mental health isn't linear and it is you know, often a, a train that people get on and off on, sadly. And so satellite really is there for those that need to step on and, and um, build some social connection um, or are needing a little bit more support in making sure that they're doing okay and that they have an outlet to express themselves. Um, but, but then um, when they're feeling fine or when life is... Um, going pretty well for them, then they're able to step back. But knowing that satellites, the door's always open for them and there's always connection going on, even if they're not part of programs, that satellites still reaching out just to check in um, and to help celebrate those positive experiences that the families are celebrating. September school holidays are just around the corner. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited for some of this warmer weather and for spring to actually hit and not this fake spring that we seem to be getting at the moment. Uh, so what's happening for us? It's our one of our busiest periods of time this year. So um, we have on offer another Satellite Connect program coming up. So this one will be online six week program for our 18 to 25 year olds. Um, and so regional Victoria, please get on board. Um, it's your opportunity to shine. Um, all our programs are free. Um, and as part of Satellite Connect, you'll be receiving all the equipment that you need to, to participate in all those activities um, that we do. And you get to meet our wonderful Le uh, Ned and Larry, um, who will be taking care of you um, throughout that program. We also have two of our at home with satellite programs. As I said before, these are an amazing program that came about because of COVID and are a real um, great way of starting your journey within satellite or young people's journeys within satellite. Um, they get to be uh, creative in their own space and feel a little bit less um, worried or anxious about meeting new people. Uh, so free program once again, but uh, young people will be given um, an arts and craft, craft activity kit delivered to the home. And the Ready Steady Balance, which is for our 8 to 11 year olds, is talking about um, things that make us feel a little bit wonky. So everybody in their life has things that that they need to do that make them feel a little bit anxious or worried, um, confused or stressed. 
Um, but we all have things in our lives that make us feel great. So it's really talking about things that fill up our buckets or filling up our cups that make us feel alive, make us feel happy and feel in control. So this program is really about trying to find that balance. It's a bit tricky sometimes for our young people um, within their caring roles or even just within themselves to be giving lots of themselves in lots of different ways. So we just want to remind young people about all the fun things that they know, all the, the ways that they like to express themselves or like to be creative so that we can make this balancing beam. The other program that we have um, is our Superheroes Wear Masks program, which is a 12 to 14 year old program. It's it was um, it explores the possibilities that exist when we disguise ourselves. So by swapping stories about the things that we care about, by um, diving into our self-expression and celebrating who we are um, by using props and craft materials, we get to bring characters to life that hopefully in some way positively change the world. It could be positively change the world for themselves or positively change the world uh, for others. Um, we also have our face-to-face -face programs, which we call our Create and Connects. Um, and these programs are going to be located in the Dandenong um, area or on the south east sort of um, area of Victoria. Um, and these programs um, explore life's experiences. So making meaning, um, story sharing, get to use music and street art to celebrate and create and find useful ways of self-expression um, designed for those that don't want to say it. They want to spray it and they want to scream it from the rooftops. Um, so they get to make fun playlists. They get to have a dance release and just chill. Um, and our photography one gets to help about um, making a tag for themselves, so a personal tag, breaking down stigma, um, getting to explore their strengths, um, and finding just new ways of expressing themselves. And then the Pistos de Restance <laughs> um, is our kids' camp. So a uh, three-day, two-night camp that uh, these school holidays we're going to be in Anglesey. It's an opportunity for our young 9 to 12 primary school aged young people to do some fun camp activities. There's canoeing, archery, there's hut building, um, fire sharing stories around the fire. But then we also then get to really um, start those arts and craft activities where we get to have those deeper, meaningful conversations. So as I started to explain before about our feelings boxes, it's a little activity that we get to um, start to talk to young people about the feelings that they feel safe and brave enough to share with the world. You know, they get to use feathers and fun colours and, and um, stickers and rocks. And then on the inside, it's talking about those feelings that sometimes we're afraid or we're scared or we don't want to share with the world because we're worried about how the world will perceive those feelings. So it could be, you know, feelings of fear or worry or concern, um, but it can include things like anger and hatred and, and but saying that all feelings matter and all feelings are valid um, and then starting to unpack those feelings of why they, why they might be feeling that or what they could do when they are feeling those sort of feelings. What a privilege to be able to speak to you about our amazing programs. I'm just going to pass you now to Kim, who's going to go through um, any of our questions that we've had through the chat. Thank you so much, Mel. I might ask the rest of the team to come on board again so that we can start to answer some of these questions. And also just to say a big thank you to everyone um, for adding your questions into the Q&A and a little apology for a couple of those technical glitches that were happening earlier on. So uh, the first question we have actually is just around um, young people being able to actually contact satellite independently um, on their own and self-referring. So Rose, would you like to talk to that one? Sure, yes. Uh, so we have, as Mel pointed out, we have a, um, a 
people dedicated in our engagement team to directly liaise with young people who are at the heart of our organization. And so we have a very strong presence also on social media. So young people can basically just pick up the, they can pick up the phone, they can ring us um, and Ren may want to comment on this. You can um, contact us by our QR code, you can drop in, but there's no referral needed. It's, it's really very straightforward. And somebody from the, our youth and get youth, Focus people on our engagement team will contact you. Um, consent's only needed for 18, below 18. Um, having said that, we it may be that we talk with the young person about their um, who lives in and around them um, and talk with them about who's in their world, but there's no there's no um, other referral criteria for that. that All right, thank you. Thanks, Rose. Yes. Um, the next question we have is just curious if participants may join the program or programs post the death of a family member who was experiencing mental health challenges. I can I can answer that quickly. Uh, not quickly. I can answer that. Uh, yes, uh, they can. Um, definitely. We have had um, over the years a number of young people, children, young people who've joined um, because it's um, as we all know that grief is an ongoing process and having a, a family member with mental health challenges who's who's died would be is profound and so the the impact of that would be ongoing so the answer to that is is yes and we would talk with the young person and their family about how that can best be experienced and understood um ongoingly thanks rose all right, the next question is, if a young person in a family with someone with a mental health challenge attends regular psychologist appointments, can they still participate with Satellite Foundation? I can answer this one. Uh, we know that mental health challenges isn't just isolated to one family member at a time. And often other family members experience their own mental health challenges. Um, as long as there's another family member other than themselves that sell, that has mental health challenges, they are more than welcome to come and join Satellite Foundation. There are a few little extra questions that I might ask when asking the family or asking you about how to support this young person. So, you know, learning about are there any behaviour management plans that are currently in place or um, are there any known triggers or, other, or more importantly, how can we best support this young person to make them have the most enjoyable experience while on camp or while on programs? So at the end of the day, there's no blanket no. Um, we just really want to know how to best support this young person while they're on a program. Great. Thanks, Mel. Uh, next question. Do your programs run over the Christmas break? I can also answer this one. Okay. Um, they do. So we, we do have a little bit of family time um, in the lead up to Christmas and into the new year. However, things start to roll unroll again um, the second week of January. So um, there'll be more Create and Connects, more at homes, um, and hopefully a camp program. Thanks. Actually, which that leads us into our next question, which is, are the camps for the child only, or do they include provision for one or both parents? So this might be a nice opportunity just to talk a little bit more about camps in general and the different age groups we offer and all that sort of thing. Um, Mel, would you be happy to talk to that? Definitely. Uh, so we we kind of have three um, different levels of camps um, at Satellite. So we have our young people, 9 to 12 primary school aged, where there's an opportunity for young people to come away by themselves. Um, and then we have our 12 to 15 year old young leader camps, which is um, for our 12 to 15 uh, secondary school young people, which is also by themselves. Um, they get to highlight and have their strengths um, noticed and, and learn some skills about um, sharing their lived experience, all while um, having some fun connecting activities with, with peers of the same age. And then we've also been doing family retreats, which in the new year we're going to be um, partnering with other organisations and, and offering um, satellite programs um, as part of their family retreats, where the whole family is taken away um, and get three days um, 
to have some respite um, from just those general family pressures that we all feel, the cooking, the cleaning, the, the, the housework, the, the worrying about extracurricular activities, um, families just to get to, to connect, to, to eat together, food is, is so comforting um, and, and we get to, to share meals together and, and just for an opportunity for the young people to see their parents or carers um, in, in different light. Thanks. I'll just add something, Kim, yeah. about um, sure. yeah, um, the 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 camps for the. I think the question was that the camps for the child or only do they include provision for one or both parents aside from the family retreat. The the camps, the other two camps, don't in, don't include provision for the parents per se. But there's a lot of communication with the parent care of family before and after the camps, particularly for the primary school age, and we have an opportunity to. Um, meet with parents before the camp and sometimes through the drop-offs the drop-offs we can also engage with the parent or carer or other significant family member so it's they don't come on camp but we work hard as a team to engage with the parent carer and family during that time I guess yeah thanks Rose thanks for clarifying uh, the next question we have is are young people who are also experiencing mental health challenges as well as the family member, welcomed. So I see if Ren wants to answer that. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy to. Um, yes, of course. Um, here at Satellite, we often say Satellite is for those with loved ones with mental health challenges as well as their own. Um, and so it is always welcome here to, and also I find um, I personally have mental health challenges of my own and also I'm neurodivergent um, and Satellite is such a welcoming and safe space for both of those things. I find I've been on retreats, um, I've been like at many programs and it's always so neuroaffirming and so always so like accepting of all my like mental health challenges. Um, and it's very like open and warm if you want to disclose anything or if you don't want to disclose anything. Um, and it's always, we're always here for you. Thanks so much, Ren. Uh, the next question, if the family member is diagnosed with autism, is the young carer eligible for Satellite Foundation? Yes. <laughs> And then I think we're all nodding there. Um, uh, yes to that question. Thank you, um, Carolyn. It's an important question. And um, yes, as Mel said, we have a very broad um, definition of mental health challenge, and we understand that um, it's important. We include autism um, and your and your people who are living with neurodivergence. That's part of the what we do. So yes, thanks. Simple <laughs> answer yeah what is the process if there are safety or well-being concerns raised by the young person during their participation at satellite i'll, I'll start with that and uh, maybe when i want to add anything mel but i mean we are an organization that uh, takes child safety of course very seriously and we um uh, we're a child safe organization and so part of our um uh, induction and training, ongoing training process, and equip our team members to respond to uh, reports of um, uh, allegations of child abuse or neglect. Um, and we take that very, very, very seriously. So we would, um, yeah, for all our, in particularly our in-person program, but all our programs, we follow due process and we have a, uh, I guess, a continuous improvement process where we look at things that get raised during our programs, how we responded, how can we improve it if need, how we follow up um, and make sure that each person right through from volunteers to casual staff to team members um, and other participants in the in the program where it's been raised, that safety is a priority um, and making sure that we are on, across the ongoing, the legal require our legal requirements uh, reporting requirements um yeah I, I think it's i would say it's taken very seriously um, and we follow the steps that we're required to do do you want to add anything to that mel just that we also then follow up with the organization that 
that is supporting that family or that young person. So if an allegation or a disclosure has been shared with staff members, then, you know, we will be reaching out back to you just to let you know, um, did you know about this? Um, j just so that um, all organisations, ju just as we always say, young people, are, uh, we're young people centred, but we're family focused. So to be able to share information about young people and what they've brought to satellite, just so that other organisations are also um, aware of what's going on for that young person. Great. Thanks so much, Mel. I wondered also if we might just touch a little bit on, um, it hasn't actually come through as a question, but just a couple of other aspects of Satellite, one of which is volunteering um, and the opportunities that exist for volunteers at Satellite. Would you like to speak to that, Rose? Yes. Um, so if there are people listening today or you know somebody who's in your orbit who you think might be interested in volunteering, we have a developing volunteer program. We would love to hear from people who would um, interested in volunteering. Are they in a, I guess, in a direct capacity working as a volunteer in one of our programs, particularly camps? So we've got some, as you've heard, we've got some camps coming up. We run a lot of camps and they're a combination of volunteers and casual facilitators and our team. And they're a great way for people to find out more about what we do, but just to meet to, to meet um, um, young people um, and have fun. Uh, we have an induction process for volunteers. Um, we uh, love to hear how people would like to contribute. It might not be going on a camp. It might be that might be this like that's a lot because um, they're overnight. We also would love to hear from people who are interested in sharing their expertise in a range of different ways. Um, coming into the office and helping with some of our admin. Um, we have a lot of packing of boxes and we're very creative organising, lots of getting stuff ready for the at home. So if you like glitter and you like um, googly eyes and packing things up, and uh, it's a great way to um, see what we do and meet the team. What <laughs> if you've got some googly eyes there? <laughs> um, when we put together the beautiful um, at home boxes, they all get sent out to Australia Post and they land in people's homes and they all have to get packaged up and sent out and taken to the post office. So that's a sort of a way of um, helping out uh, in a really fun way and not too time in, too, too time intense. But we would love to talk with people to see what you're interested in, what capacity you have and how we can support you to find out more. Great. Thank you so much, Rose. Um, I think we have time maybe for one or two more questions, and I wanted to direct this one to um, Mel. Can siblings attend Satellite? More the merrier. Uh, we do, though, try really hard um, during our camp programs to offer separate programs for siblings. It's an opportunity for, you know, one young person to have um, some attention for, at home for their sibling, um, but then also the other person to receive some support from satellite. And then, you know, we try to, to change it up at the next camp program or the next program, but definitely siblings are more than welcome. Wonderful, thank you. And then um, I wondered if you could just touch a little bit more on the diagnosis and formal diagnosis. Um, does there actually need to be a formal diagnosis to attend satellite? No, uh, it can be, uh, when we're asking questions, um, we, we tend to not use clinical language unless a family member is disclosing that they, they have a formal um, diagnosis. But other than that, it could just be that they've, you know, they've been uh, feeling depressed for a period of time. It could be self-identifying language. As we know, it, it's quite a barrier for family members and young people to receive formal diagnoses. And there's a lot of shame and stigma that comes from going to a doctor to get a formal diagnosis. So it can be self-identifying. I would say, um, just to add to that, Kim, that um, yeah. we tend, we we talk a lot about social and emotional well-being and, and sort of well-being in and, and a holistic way in the same way that um, First Nations folks, communities talk about social and emotional well-being. It's a much we feel that's a much better fit for the population of young people and families that we are wanting to connect with. Um, so, well-being, mental health, and well-being more than a mental illness and a diagnostic criteria. We're much that's a, a we feel that's a better fit for all, for us going going forward. 
Lovely. Thanks, Rose. All right. Our last question um, for this webinar today is, do you need support, i.e. donations, to make this happen? <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, <laughs> donations are always wonderfully accepted. To be able to continue the amazing work that we all do, um, yeah, donations are always warmly accepted. Um, but it's not just the gift of money. It's the gift of your time. It, it's, you know, you attending programs such as this, our webinar. It's you sharing um, our posts on Saddle, on um, Facebook and on social media. It's, it's you referring young people and families to our services. Um, definitely continue. Thanks so much, Mel. Right, I'm going to pass over to Ren, who's going to wrap up for today. Um, and thank you very much, everyone, for those questions. That was great. Cool. Thanks, Kim. So that's all for today. Thank you all so much again for attending. We truly appreciate you learning to learn a little bit more about Satellite. Um, as a quick reminder, we heard from Rose, our CEO, who talked about who Satellite is, um, what we do, our visions, our values, and our purpose. We saw some stories of impact. I touched on the term young carer and what it means and the challenges that young carers may face. We talked about stigma and introduced our Stigma Beat project, discussed some pathways for the young people here at Satellite, and then Mel got to talk about all of the fun programs that we run, as well as what's coming up in September and how to make a referral for a young person to join Satellite. She also touched on how Satellite is different because overall Satellite Foundation is an incredible and such a warm space for young people who have loved ones and family members with mental health challenges um, to connect with others who understand them and their experiences. And everyone who ever comes into Satellite will always be welcome here. Um, again, a recording of this webinar will be sent to you shortly after this. Um, please feel free to share with your networks. We'll also be sending out a feedback form, which we would so deeply appreciate if you could give us your thoughts on. Um, and before we wrap up, I want to thank our sponsors, especially the Victorian government, for their ongoing support. There will also be some contact information if we could change the slide. Yes. Um, contact information on the screen now if you have any further questions or would like to follow up. Our incredible engagement team are always happy to have a chat. Um, but in that, that is the end of today's webinar. Thank you all so much again for your time. Please stay connected with us through social media and our newsletters. Um, and as Rose often says, go gently. Thank you. Everyone.